Welcome to your video on percent applications. This is part one. There are lots and lots of word problems that we're going to be working on with percentages. And so part one is going to be connected more to formulas that you may be familiar with. So the first problem is talking about a student's grade. It says a student's average, which in this class means the arithmetic mean, and so just to refresh, the mean is when you would add up all of the numbers and then divide by how many numbers there were. So just in case it's a little rusty over the summer here. So the average test score on four tests is a 78. What must the student score on the fifth test be for the average score to be an 80? So I want you to circle that four tests is a 78. Sorry, some technical difficulties here. There we go, four tests is a 78. Um, what that means is it's actually like four 78s. So four different tests were 78s. And it may not be that they were all 78, but we've already averaged those. So it's just like saying on, I had four tests and each of them I scored a, a 78. The unknown here is going to be the fifth test. So X is going to be the score on the fifth test. And then I mentioned that we are just finding the mean. And so if you go back to what you know about finding an average or finding the mean, you add up all the test scores. So we're going to take those first four tests, which we're counting as a 78. We're going to add those together. And then we're going to add in that fifth test score, which is our unknown, so plus X. Then we divide that by the number of tests, and there are five. Now we've taken four, but we have that next test that we're going to be taking, so there will be five. And then that's going to equal the overall average. And what we're told in this problem is that we would like the average to be an 80. So now, this kind of looks like a big, huge problem, but it's not that bad to solve. The first thing we're going to do is we're going to add up all of those 78s. So we're going to do what's combining like terms. So that gives us 312 plus X. You have to keep those separate. You cannot say 312X. Those are not like terms, so you just leave it as two separate terms. That's still going to be divided by 5. And then on the other side, we have 80. But we've been working on proportions, so to make this look like a proportion, I'm just going to turn that 80 into a fraction or a ratio, and I'm going to throw a 1 under there so that we now have this proportion. And we know from previous lessons that we solve proportions by cross-multiplying. So if I do the 312 plus x times 1, I just get 312 plus x. The other cross product, 5 times 80, gives us 400. And now we are left with a simple one-step equation. In order to isolate the x, I have to get rid of that 312. So we are going to subtract 312 from both sides, and we get 88. So this student, if they want to get an overall test average of 80, the fifth test must be an 88. All right, the next set of problems are going to deal with a couple of formulas called percent increase or percent decrease. If you did any shopping over the summer or maybe back to school shopping, um, you might have hit some sales. The percent that you were given for the sale could represent the percent of decrease in the price. So here are your formulas. For the percent of increase, you're going to have the percent of increase over 100. So that kind of takes us back to what we were working about with our percent basics. We always have the percent over 100. Then on the other side, it's going to represent the amount of the increase over the original amount. Make sure that bottom is the original amount. I would say when students make mistakes, they often um, mix up the bottom of the fraction and they forget to put the original amount. Percent decrease is not much different. Um, you basically change all the increase words from the previous formula to decrease. So take a second and copy those down. Press pause if you need to. And then we're going to work out some problems. So our first problem here says the Johnson's house currently has 1,200 square feet of living space. They would like to increase the living space to 1,575 square feet. What is the percent increase? So I want to take you back to your formula percent of increase over 100. We don't have the percent here. So the percent of increase is going to be our variable. So x 
is going to equal the percent of increase. Now, the other thing that we have to figure out is the amount of increase, if we look over at that other ratio. So the amount of increase, we have to figure out how much did their living space increase. So to get that, we're just going to take what they want it to be minus what it started at. So the 1,575 minus the 1,200. And so the amount of increase is 375. So now that we kind of have that figured out, we can start to set up our proportion. So on the left-hand side where it says percent of increase over 100, that's going to be x over 100. On the right-hand side, the amount of increase, so the living space went up by 375, over the original, and here's where you have to make sure that you grab the right number. You have to put it over what, it, what the original amount was, which in this case was 1,200. Okay, so we cross multiply. And then we divide, and we get an answer of 31.25%. And again, it's fine to have those decimals in there. We want you to get used to that. All right, next question. A sweater is marked down from an original price of 45 to 33.75. By what percent has the original price of the sweater been marked down? So we start with our formula. This time it's decreasing, so we're going to go with the decrease. Again, our unknown is the percent. So x equals the percent of decrease. And then on the other side, we need to figure out the amount of decrease. So obviously we just subtract the two prices, the 44 minus 33.75. which gives us 11.25. Once we've done that bit of pre-work, now we can set up our proportion. So we have x over 100 equals 11.25 over the original amount, which in this problem was the $45. We again have a proportion, so we cross multiply. And then we divide. And we get an answer of 25%. So it's going to be important as you work with these formulas that you um, get used to where everything goes and that you start to memorize them because when you are going to be taking your final test, you'll have to know these. All right, our last problem says a manufacturing company with 450 employees begins a new product line and must increase their number of employees by 18%. How many total employees does the company have now? So we are going with increase again, only this time we know the percent of increase. So what we're looking for is the actual amount of increase to help us figure out how many total employees the company will have. So when we set up our proportion, the percent of increase over 100 is going to be 18 over 100. The amount of increase is our unknown, and then the original amount is 450. So when we cross multiply and divide, which you guys should be pretty good with now, um, you come up with an x value of 81. Now it's important to note that that is how many new employees. So a few videos ago I said just because you solve for x doesn't mean you're done with your problem. You may have to still go ahead and answer it. So 81 is the new employees. So now we have to find the total. And the total is going to be, they started with 450. They're adding in 81 new employees. So how many employees does the company now have? The answer is actually 531. So again, just because you find x doesn't mean you're done. Make sure you're going back and answering the question. All right, this concludes your video, and you are now ready to start your practice on Percent Applications Part 1.